All right, welcome back. So let's go with the acid flow. So first, before we get started, I just wanted to show you a quick example of what an exploit traffic looks like. So the part highlight, the data highlighted in blue is essentially the entirety of the PDU packet. The ones before, it's basically like the whole like frame additional stuff that we don't necessarily necessarily care about at the moment. And what I want to pay attention to is the highlighted bytes, um, because that's the bytes whose components will be used in the computation to determine the length. Okay, so let's get into it. So first, we re acknowledge that parameter one is of type BLK DRV PDU data, um, and then now the code is going to do a bunch of mathematical operations to determine the length. I will just go for those in the in the animations and. If at any point an, an animation or cause that I need to explain, then I, I would just go over that. So we're retrieving the header length. Every time you see a little fire animation, that's a reminder that the data is being tainted with attacker controlled impute data. Um, now we retrieve sender length, right? And remember from the packet that the sender length is the lower three bits of the entire length byte, right? So that's why we have this computation going here. And then of course we proceed to receive to uh, obtain the receiver length, and then we perform a computation to basically determine where in the packet we should start reading from. So that's going to be parameter six. So parameter six is going to tell us basically be pointing to an offset into the packet. Parameter one probably specifies the end of the packet, and then parameter six specifies that offset. So skipping past all the header information. And then we're going to calculate the size. So at this point, if I were to just backtrack a little bit, at this point, we are past the header information in here. So after all that calculation, parameter six should be pointing right, right here. And I believe parameter one is pointing right here so that when we do the, when we do the subtraction, we can get the side we, we can get the size of this entire gray region, which we know to be the remaining data. So if we were to skip past through real quick, at this time though, when this computation occurs, there is an opportunity or a potential for an integer overflow or underflow. And if that happens, what, what are the implications? Well, the implications are that the size parameter is actually used in a mem copy operation. So if we pick a, a data value, if we make a computation size that is too much, then we, we read too much from the source and then we overflow the, the destination. And that's essentially what's going to happen here. We have an acid size counter. And in summary, size is an unsigned integer, inconsistencies in signage of the related fields, header length, sender length, receiver length. The computed offset is not checked for validity within size of received packet, right? Because if we want to actually keep in mind that size is, size is an unsigned integer, right? If we want this number to be arbitrarily large, then we need this calculation to yield the negative number, a negative number in quotes, because when it's being casted to as an unsigned, it will just be an arbitrarily large integer. So again, once again, the summary, the computed offset is not checked for validity within size of the received packet and the, side, the signed integer math result cast to unsigned integers leading to an integer overflow. If you're interested in additional information regarding this vulnerability, I suggest you check out the references, a pretty decent write-up from Telos Intelligence, the original discoverers of this vulnerability, and of course the Kaspersky blog that took a deep dive into definition of the codices, PDUs, and rest of surrounding information that is required if you were to undertake a research with regards to the codices framework.